all yours. Hey everybody, I'm Katie and Brianna. Um, I'm the director of digital marketing for Horizon Group USA, a craft and toy company. Um, we're a family of about over 50 brands um, and we you can find us in Michaels. Um, some of our brands at Michaels are Color Zone, Discovery, uh, Mind to Design Statement. Um, so definitely check us out. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me today. I have been with Horizon for over seven years at this point. And one of my favorite things about my job is simply the fact that I get to craft all the time. Um, and I definitely specialize in the kids craft space. It's where my passion is. And I love to be creative and use my imagination. Um, and something I always just like to add in is, you know, for all you little kids out there who are kind of thinking about what can I be when I grow up and what can I do? I mean, at the end of the day, you can do anything, um, including working for a craft and toy company. So I always kind of just joke, think of your most favorite thing and then try and go to work there. Um, so I'm gonna just dive right in. Today, we are going to be doing uh, pine cone crafts. So obviously it's a great season for pine cones because it is fall. Um, so we're gonna do a pine cone pumpkin today, a pine cone sunflower, and a pine cone turkey. Um, as you can see, I have a bunch of craft alternatives available in front of me. So primarily I used felt. Um, but construction paper, craft foam, or felt could work for any of these projects. You could even use paint. Um, and if you want to be a librarian, you can absolutely be a librarian. I actually have a friend who went to college for library science. So please do not give up on your dreams. You guys can be anything. Um, so I'm going to just dive in. We'll get started with the pumpkin because it is going to need some time to dry. So. If you guys have your pine cones, the first thing I want to say is it's really important that if you're getting your pine cones from outside, which I'm not, I'm using store-bought pine, co pine cones, which sounds kind of silly, um, but they are, um, I would recommend cleaning them. So I would recommend asking an adult to just clean them in a solution of warm water and white vinegar, um, just like a 50-50 and that should get the job done. If you're in a hurry and you just wanna kind of dust them off, you can use a paintbrush to dust off any dirt or anything else that may be on your pine cones. Um, if you have a very dirty pine cone, your paint won't stick and neither will your glue. Um, so let's get started. Um, the one thing I realized when I was crafting is that my pine cone crafts really rely on a very specific type of base for my pine cones. So for your best bet to create a pine cone pumpkin, you'll want to make sure that you kind of have this flat base. So I'm gonna grab this pine cone here and get started. Um, this is a very, very simple craft, um, which is why I like to start with it. It will kind of ease us into our creativity today. Um, so grab your orange paint. Um, honestly, if you want a pink pumpkin, that's fine. Don't know that it's still a pumpkin, but maybe it's a decorated pumpkin. Doesn't matter that Halloween's over. You can make whatever color pumpkin you want. So just grab your orange paint. Um, a Sharpie marker may work, but I think anything else, you may just kind of risk ruining the tip of your marker because the pine cone has a pretty rough surface. Um, so just grab your paint and let's get started. You're just gonna paint here. Um, I learned this like really cool fact that I thought you guys would all really enjoy. And apparently, I don't even know how much I believe it, but I'm sharing it anyway, um, that the word pumpkin showed up for the first time in the fairy tale Cinderella, which I thought you guys would love. I think that that's so fun. Um, that before the 17th century, they weren't referred to as pumpkins at all they were called melons. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, and, you know, I like to believe that Cinderella is the originator of the word pumpkin, because that's just a really special thing for all of us that have grown up with that story. So I'm just painting here. Um, the best part is I'm not switching colors, so I don't even have water around, which is better when you have a bunch of cats who can come knock it over. 
Um, but if you are switching colors or you're deciding to do a bunch of different colors, be sure to wash your brush in between. Um, if you guys have questions, feel free to type them in the Q&A area. I see some hands have been being raised, um, but we can address your questions live. Um, so I'm just gonna place that down. And then, so while this sets to dry, it shouldn't take too long. The surf, I didn't do a very thick coat, um, but obviously if you want it to be a deeper coat or a deeper color, just apply another, uh, another layer of paint after it dries. Um, but while it dries, I'm just gonna cap my paint so it doesn't spill. And I am going to plug in my hot glue gun. If you guys are not using a hot glue gun or are not with an adult, please, please, please use regular glue, um, especially if it's not something you're familiar with. Um, I really don't want you guys to hurt yourselves and plain school glue should work just fine. Um, but I am gonna plug mine in so then it's hot and ready to go when we get there. So, plugged in, ready to go. So in the meantime, like I said, while the pumpkin dries, I am going to grab a pen. You can grab really anything. You can probably even use the paintbrush that you just used to paint your pumpkin. And we're gonna curl our green fuzzy stick to create the vine for our pumpkin. If you don't have a green fuzzy stick, you can also cut out little leaves from felt or construction paper. Um, fuzzy sticks, also known as chenille stems or pipe cleaners, whatever you guys have at your disposal. Um, but I'm gonna just wrap mine around a pen um, to add a really cute coil and spring to it. And then I'm just going to pull it off of the pen. <laughs> if it will come off, here we go. It's stuck on the grip. Um, and then my pumpkin isn't that large. So I'm actually going to cut this piece in half. But yours may need to be the full length, whatever. It depends on the size of your pine cone. So I'm going to cut it in half. And then I'm just going to fold that half right like that. So then there's about, there's kind of like a little V shape to my coil because then you're going to just glue it right on the inside of the first layer of your pine cone. So right here. So I just have it placed there right now. You might even be able to just place it and it will fit nicely and stay put. I would say just add a little dot of glue um, and then you'll be good to go. It'll be nice and secure. And now we have a pine cone pumpkin. Really simple craft, great for younger kids or really just great to create like adorable fall decor for your home. So I'm gonna set the pumpkin aside. If you guys are, uh, if I went a little too fast for you or you're interested in making more pumpkins, definitely check out the recording that will be available online tomorrow. So I'm gonna dive in to our next craft, which is our pine cone turkey. Um, he's so stinking cute. So this turkey is made from palms, fuzzy sticks, wiggly eyes, one pine cone, and then I used felt. But like I said, you guys could really use whatever you have at your disposal. You can use paper, you can use craft foam, or you could even just use paint if you wanted to paint each of the little feathers. Um, so let's get started. Um, for this pot, for this craft, the base of your pine cone is not nearly as important. So I am just gonna pick the biggest pine cone that I have because I want a really big turkey. I would recommend asking an adult to help you adhere all of your pieces once we complete it with a hot glue gun or using something like tacky glue, just something that's gonna dry a little bit faster than regular school glue, especially if you're using something like felt um, and especially for your pom-poms and your fuzzy sticks. So let's get started. The first step is cutting out our feathers or I'm gonna call them petals because they're petal shaped. 
So I'm going to use felt, um, but like I said, you guys can use whatever you want. And because we only have so much time for this class, I'm actually going to layer my, my colors of felt and cut my pieces all at the same time. So as you can see, I'm putting all of my felt pieces together. I want, okay. Um, I want to use all of these different fall colors. So I would recommend getting red, orange, yellow, um, and green if you want. You could even add in brown, um, but the brown will really be highlighted by your pine cone. Um, for younger kids, if you want less cutting and you want to create some kind of keepsake, rather than cutting petals, you can actually trace a handprint and cut that out as your feathers. So I'm going to show you guys, I, like I said, I layered all of my colors. So now I'm just going to cut. You can see that this is a used piece that I cut some of my petal, my feathers from earlier. So I'm just going to grab my scissors here and be careful when you're cutting. Um, I like to do a bit of a variety of sizes and I kind of put the small ones toward the front and then the larger ones toward the back but there's no right or wrong way to do it. And if you don't want a fall colored turkey, pick your favorite colors. It's totally fine. Um, what I thought it was really cool is how many feathers turkeys actually have. An adult turkey has between five and 6,000 feathers on its body. Um, and its wings have 10 stiff primary feathers and 18 to, or 19 secondary feathers. But its tail is where it has like the really large colorful feathers. So I'm just gonna cut these little petal shapes. Um, and certain felt, I like this felt cause it's a little bit stiffer. So my, my lines are a little bit crisper, but again, there's no rules about what to use, but see, cutting them all together, I yielded four petals instead of just one. So I'm just gonna keep going with that. Keep cutting my petals. And like I said, there's no perfection needed here. Just make sure that you're making a variety of different shapes and sizes. Um, so then you can kind of layer them into your pine cone. Set my petals aside as I get them done and just spread them out. I want to make sure that I have enough of each color too because I really like to mix it in. I'm a very traditional fall gal so I even wore my fall sweater today. That kind of matches the crafts I'm going to be doing but you guys are welcome to use whatever colors you want for these seriously. It could be the most colorful turkey in the world or he could just be your average average joe. <laughs> so here are some more. I'm probably going to do one more set of four and then I think I should have enough petals. Again, how it depends how much color you really want to add to your turkey that will determine how many petals you, or feathers I should say that you truly need. So now that my pile of feathers is pretty substantial, happy with it. I feel like I could work with this. I'm gonna grab my big pine cone and then I'm gonna add just a small dot of glue to each of these, the base of these feathers. So I have my hot glue gun here ready to roll. Like I said, you can always ask an adult for assistance if you're looking to use a hot glue gun. If not, feel free to use school glue or tacky glue, like I said, might dry a little bit faster. Um, so my strategy here, like I said earlier, is simply going from the front to the back. I'm putting the larger petals, feathers in the back, smaller petals slash feathers in the front. So we'll start here. Um, and uh, if you can't hear me well, um, I apologize. I will try and project a little bit better. So Honestly, you just put a little dot of glue and then you're going to spread your petals throughout to add color to your pine cone. So see, I just plopped in my first, my first one there. Now I'm going to keep going. I know that Thanksgiving might not be the same this year for everybody, 
but we have to embrace the fact that, you know, we have our families and we have together time. And, you know, at least with the virtual life that we're living, we can at least see each other's faces. So maybe this is something everybody could do virtually. I'm just gonna keep placing my petals very carefully in between the brown pieces. Cause like I said, those brown pieces of the pine cone can also act as feathers. And like I said, you can see I'm picking larger pieces. So I'm going further toward the back because they stand out more. Did you guys know, and I had no idea, this I thought was really fascinating, that only male turkeys actually gobble. Um, they're known as gobblers after the gobble call that they make to announce themselves to female turkeys and female turkeys are known as hens. So basically they need to get all the ladies attention by gobbling, which is rather silly. So just keep layering in your petals. And again, like there are no rules about, you know, do I have enough? Do I need more? At the end of the day, your turkey can be as colorful or as not colorful as you choose. So I'm just gonna keep going here. I like to spread out my colors too. I'm a little bit crazy like that. I don't like when there's like too dark orange near a dark orange. So definitely feel free to make your own color pattern. I don't know if anybody else is like me and they're really particular when they craft, but I do get a little bit crazy here with my placement. So I keep going, you know, it's, it's really, um, honestly a little therapeutic doing the same motion and just kind of relaxing while I craft. I love to craft because of that. I've been crafting a lot on Sunday afternoons and it's a great way to end the weekend and start the week. So I'm going to keep doing this. Keep layering in my turkey feathers. Yeah, and I see that somebody painted their feathers on. That's totally cool. Like that's the best part about this craft is how versatile it is. And you can literally do it with any of the materials you have at your disposal. Um, I just think it's really about inspiring each other to be open to starting something new and trying a new craft. So I'm gonna keep layering in. I mean, you could literally do this all day, right? Just keep adding more and more feathers until it's so colorful that you can't even see any more brown. But you can see I haven't even added that many in yet and it's really just starting to fill out and look really colorful and fun. Just gonna add in a few more and then we'll move on to the next step. And if I'm going a little too fast for you guys, or you feel like you need more guidance, certainly reach out um, to the Michaels website tomorrow or their YouTube, and you can check out the full recording of this class. Also, if you enjoy it today, I'm going to shamelessly plug the fact that I'm also doing a grateful garland and wreath tutorial on the 17th. So be sure to come back and hang out with me. Just gonna layer in a few more feathers. Now I'm getting a little bit too picky. Hmm. Alrighty. I think one more red one in the front. And like I said, you know, you can add as many or as few as you choose. There are no rules. Make this craft your own. Be inspired by what I'm doing, and you know, you can really do whatever you want with it. Maybe you're not even making a turkey. Maybe it's a peacock, you know, it could be any bird. Alrighty. So now that I've added, what I'm gonna say is my last feather for now. So we can move on to the next step. Um, so you can see like how much more filled out it looks. It looks really fun and cute. And the bigger your, the bigger your pieces are, the more color will pop out. 
Um, so next we're gonna attach his head. So if you have a pom-pom, um, I think this is your best bet. You could also use a bottle cap or honestly you could use a fuzzy stick that you roll up. You can also just cut out a circle from craft foam or felt, whatever you have accessible. And his head, I'm gonna plop it right here. So I'm gonna glue that. Um, to make it not face down, I would recommend going on the top end so then it's supported and his head sticks up instead of pointing downward. So I'm just gonna glue that there and we are good to go. The next part we're gonna add is your turkey's waddle. The waddle is the red rubbery part that kind of hangs from the turkey's turkey's beak. So you can see I have this guy put together. So that's his waddle. So we're going to make one of those. We made ours from fuzzy sticks, aka pipe cleaners, whatever you guys refer to them as. Um, but truly, um, you can cut it out from felt or craft foam, whatever, whatever works for you. So for my turkey's waddle, I'm just going to cut about, I don't know, two inches or so from my fuzzy stick. Give that a cut. And then I'm gonna just curl the end. So I'm gonna get kind of close up here so you guys can really see. And then I'm gonna turn it in like that. So it's a little bit of a hook. And then squeeze it and curl it up. So you kind of keep doing that oval kind of shape for your turkey's waddle. And there you have it. Very easy. Oops, wrong camera. <laughs> so this is your waddle. There you go. How many times can I say waddle before the end of this class? <laughs> um, and we're gonna attach that to the turkey's face. So I'm gonna attach mine kind of where the beak, you want your beak to cover it. So it kind of looks like it's underneath. So I'm gonna attach it sort of in the center of the turkey head. Um, if you guys have questions, be sure to write them in via the Q&A chat box. I'm here to answer any of your questions live or my friend Maria is here too and she can certainly help you guys out. So now that I've attached my turkey's waddle as seen here, we are going to finalize his beak. So for my turkey's beak, I'm personally using fuzzy stick, but again, if you don't have a fuzzy stick available, you can use felt, you can use foam, you can use paper, whatever you have accessible. So here is my fuzzy stick and my dog is going up the stairs behind me. He's trying to be sneaky. Um, so I'm gonna cut again, about like a half, one and a half inch to two inch piece of fuzzy stick. And I'm gonna just cut. And then we're gonna turn that this piece into a triangle that will be his beak. So I'm just going to fold it into itself like that. And then I'm going to fold the other side into itself as shown. And you can certainly paint the eyes of the turkey. Um, I'm gonna be using fuzzy stick. I mean, wiggly eyes, um, but definitely you can paint them on, you can draw them on, whatever works best for you and whatever you have access to. So now that I've folded it as shown, I'm then gonna fold one more time, each side in half. Like so, okay. And now I'm going to fold all of those pieces into each other. And now I have my turkeys. You kind of just roll it up, but you have a nice point for your turkey's beak. You can also just cut out a triangle from craft foam, construction paper. Um, you can paint it on, draw it on, whatever you have access to. So now that I've completed my turkey's beak, I'm simply going to glue it on. And like I said, you want it to cover your waddle. So it looks like the waddle is actually coming from the beak like that. So there's my turkey. And the last step of our adorable turkey is his eyes so he can see. 
So you can use, I have wiggly eyes here. You guys can use wiggly eyes. You can also use pens or markers or paint, whatever. You can cut them out. What, again, whatever you have accessible, feel free to use. So I stuck that eye on. So I'm gonna just stick this eye on. I purposely chose a little bit of oversized eyes because I thought it would look silly with bigger eyes. So you can use whatever size you want or you have at your disposal. And here it is. Here is our adorable little turkey. Here he is posing. Here he is with his turkey friend, two turkeys. So I hope you guys liked making a turkey um, and I hope he came out super, super cute. Be sure to share with us, hashtag make it with Michaels. Um, and we would love to see what, you, what you've created. Um, and we have one more craft um, to finish off our day. And that is going to be a sunflower craft. So similarly to the pumpkin, I didn't realize how much I relied on the base of this. But then I realized it literally doesn't matter. It's the center of my sunflower, regardless of what it looks like. So you're just going to need another pine cone. Again, um, if you took your pine cone from outside, I would recommend washing it in a mix of warm water and white vinegar. Definitely ask an adult for help. Um, but if you're just kind of last minute grabbing a pine cone, you can also just brush it off. Um, if it has a lot of dirt on it, you're just gonna struggle to um, get paint and glue to stick well to it. So for the sunflower, this is one where alternatives aren't as available um, in terms of being able to paint it. So I would say if you have any kind of paper, um, cardboard that you could paint, um, you could literally paint paper yellow, um, and uh, my dog is here so he can say hi. Huh? Hi, Cole. Um, <laughs> so anybody or anything that you have should work just fine. Um, I'm going to be using felt, but craft foam would work fine as well. Um, this is great cutting practice because you do have to cut a lot of petals, but the bigger your petals are, the less you need. Um, so I started cutting some here and I'm going to recommend that you do the exact same, uh, kind of cheating that I did earlier where you just fold it over a few times. So then you get more petals out of each cut. So let's get started. I'm just going to get cutting. The petals can kind of look like this. They again, don't have to be perfect, but I just tried to make them kind of teardrop shape, I guess you could say. Um, so I'm going to cut larger ones so then I can hopefully finish this before, before uh, we have to go. Um, but again, the, the te uh, technique behind this is simply cutting out larger petals for the back and then kind of building your way up as you layer them into the front. Um, for this, you're also going to need green craft foam or felt or construction paper. Again, whatever you have at your disposal. So I'm just gonna keep cutting some really large petals. Large petals. Now I'm gonna cut some smaller petals to fill in my spaces. Um, you don't really know if you have enough petals until you get started. So I'd say like cut a solid amount, probably like 20 or so. Um, and then you can kind of start layering them on to see how many more you'll need. So I'm just going to do a few more cutouts because I definitely don't want you guys to just be watching me cutting petals for the rest of the class. So we'll cut those out. Now that I feel like I have a decent amount of petals, I'm going to start layering them onto my pine cone. Um, again, this is like a similar 
technique to what we did with the pine cone turkey, where the smaller pieces go in the front and the larger go in the back. So I would just start, see how I have about two rows here. I have the first row and the second row. I would, I'm going to start and put my second row. That's going to be my base. So I would kind of set your base for how far back you want to go. So then you'll know how many more you need to cut out. Um, something I learned about sunflowers, they're not only my favorite flower, they're probably a lot of people's favorite because they are so beautiful, but they actually track the sun. So they, it's called heliotropism and they basically face east in the morning and follow the sun as the earth moves during the day. But as the flowers get older and heavier, the stems stiffen and the mature flower heads generally remain facing east. So it's like when they're younger, they really move toward the sun. And I just think that's so cool. Um, and something I saw on Instagram the other day is that apparently when sunflowers can't find the sun, they face each other. Don't know if that's true, but man, it was an adorable thought. And like, who doesn't wanna be there for their sunflower friends? So I just added a dab of glue on the end. And then, like I said, I'm gonna use my second row cause I don't wanna go back any further than that and just plop it in there. And I'm gonna just keep adding my larger ones as I go. So just pull out all your larger petals, add a dab of glue, hot glue again works best, but definitely don't do it without adult supervision. Um, or ask an adult for help later. And I'm gonna actually spread mine out a little bit. I think you get more, better bang for your cut. <laughs> so for all of the petals that you could cut out, um, if you spread the larger ones out a little bit more then you can kind of just fill in the blanks with smaller ones. So I'm gonna keep doing that. Um, like I said, if you don't have felt, you can paint paper yellow, you can color paper yellow and then cut out your petals. You use craft foam, even like a nice um, cardboard would be good to cut out. So don't let materials stop you from being crafty. I mean, this is from outside, right? There we go. And I'm just gonna keep going around, adding in large petals as I go. I also really love that sunflowers aren't only beautiful, but they're great to eat. I'm a big fan of sunflower seeds. Um, they also have sunflower butter, which is so cool. Um, I am a peanut butter gal, but I know not everybody is as lucky as I am to be able to eat peanut butter all the time. So let's see, I'm just gonna keep going around. So once you get, I wanna give you guys again the next steps because I don't think we're gonna run out of time. But so the amount of petals you cut is really determined by how large you cut them, but also how large your pine cone is. So I have a pretty small pine cone. So I only cut about 20 petals, it looks like to start, but I tried to cut them really big. So then I can have a nice solid layer and then fill in with the other smaller petals once I finish that. So as you can see here, I only have a small space to fill in so I can kind of show you what the next part would look like. So now that I have like a solid layer of large petals on this side, my next step, so once you've finished layering in all of your large, you'll start adding in your smaller. So I have like this smaller petal, I'm just going to add again, it's the exact same strategy, just do a dot of glue on the end and fill in that space right there. So even though I don't have a ton of petals there, there's no blank space. So that's how I would recommend, like you'll get the most petals, you know, if, or the most use of your petals, if you kind of spread them out a little bit and then just fill in as, as needed. Cause to be honest, you could literally cut, I mean, I think for this guy, I cut probably 50 petals or so, um, but I did much smaller ones. So if you do larger ones, it will kind of fill in the space a little bit better. Um, so let's grab more large petals, keep petaling it up. Um, 
Something else I learned during my sunflower research is that the world's tallest sunflower reaches 30 feet and one inch. Who wouldn't want that on their front, front lawn? Like I would absolutely love a massive, gigantic, super, super tall sunflower garden on my lawn. It'd be like the lawn everybody would want, the yard, the most amazing garden. Maybe one day I'll have a sunflower field on my farm. If anybody lives at a sunflower farm, I'd love to come visit. I'm sure everyone's done their like fun fall activities, but I've heard that sunflower picking could be really, really fun as well. If there's any time left, it might be a little too cold in a lot of places that we all live, but apple picking, pump, pumpkin picking, maybe even just eating apples and, and pumpkin pie. It's what I prefer to do rather than pick them. <laughs> So as you can see, I almost have my full layer of large petals done. So at this point, I can kind of tell if I have enough petals or not, um, because in theory, I really only need about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, probably eight more just to kind of fill in my blank spaces. So depending, like you said, depending on like the size that you really choose to cut your petals will really determine how many you need. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly keep layering these guys in. And you know what's fun about these is you get such a nice finished project that they're just super cute for fall decor on display. Um, and if you chose to do your hand prints earlier for your turkey, that's just like the best keepsake. And if there are any parents out there, I know my mom kept all of my crafts from when I was a kid and they're like so fun to look at. Um, the head of the turkey, I used a pom-pom. So you can use a pom-pom or cut out a shape. Um, I would probably recommend a pom-pom if you have it, just because it's easier to attach the uh, embellishments to. Um, but you can certainly cut out a shape or I even recommended using a bottle cap. That's all you have. Um, so then I'm just gonna slip this right in here. So you can kind of see my sunflower is really starting to fill out and really come together. And I have some pieces here that I just keep kind of pushing out to flatten it a little bit. Um, and the pom-pom size for your, the turkey head sort of um, depends on the size of your pine cone, but I used one inch pom-poms. Um, so, I'm gonna keep going around. This is another craft. You could really make any flower. I just love sunflowers and they're super fall. So I thought it'd be a fun one to do. Um, but you know, you can cut any colors and do, you know, of, of petals, do whatever you want. I always say there are no rules when it comes to crafting. You can pick your favorites. I'm starting to get a lot of hot glue spider webs over here. I don't know about you guys, but it happens when my Blue gets a little too cold. It's not the season for spider webs anymore, right? Halloween's over, which I'm a little sad about. I don't know about you guys, but excited for what's to come. You know, we have so many holidays ahead of us before the end of the year. Alrighty, so my sunflower is really coming along. It, I've really started to fill it in. And as I said, like start with your base in the back and then you can kind of just layer in your petals into the front like so. At this point, I'm just kind of sticking them in because I don't want to bore the heck out of you guys just showing you the same thing over and over again. Um, so you just kind of keep going until you're really happy with how filled out it is. At this point, I'm feeling pretty good. Um, and I wanna show you guys how to create your leaves. So here we go, my sunflower. And I have my finished sunflower here as better inspiration. So you can just kind of keep layering it in. And like I said, if you have a nice flat bottomed pine cone, this is fantastic for your sunflower, but this is also the color of a sunflower. So the last piece to finish your sunflowers is your leaves. So I'm gonna use green felt, 
again, use whatever color you want. Um, and I want my leaves to be really big because I have really big petals. So I want my leaves to really stand out. So I'm just gonna cut a teardrop kind of shape from my felt. It's really big. I'm only gonna do one leaf for this particular sunflower. And then to add the dimensional kind of piece that this has with the fold, all you do is take your leaf and you actually just kind of fold it into itself like this. So like a taco, but you're gonna kind of do it at the base instead of in the middle. So I'm just gonna glue that to hold. And once your piece is dry, then you can attach your leaf to your pine cone sunflower. So I'm just gonna glue this on. And there we have it. Our very festive, fall festive sunflower made out of pine cone. So today in our class, we've learned how to make a pine cone sunflower, a pine cone turkey, and a pine cone pumpkin. If you guys enjoyed today's class, which I hope you did as much as I did, um, you can join me again on November 17th and we'll be creating grateful wreaths and garlands. Um, and if you feel like I went a little bit too fast or you'd like a little bit more direction, definitely check out the recording that will be posted on michaels.com and their YouTube channel. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me today and I hope everybody has a great day.